Jamie with HardRockChick.com, and I'm here with uh, Karasakalga. I'll have you guys introduce yourselves and tell me your roles in the band. So, so, you go. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Ferris, bass player. I'm Faisal, guitar, um, vocalist. All right. Um, so we're here in Anaheim at their rehearsal space. Um, I was at your show at the Whiskey the other night. Excellent show. Thank you. Thank you. I think a great place to start would be to um, just briefly catch us up on uh, how your lives have been post-documentary. Okay, I think you can start with that. Well, so far, you know, like we got here on uh, separate timing. Like a uh, few few of us been, a couple of us been here for about three years, and and uh, the rest got there like a year later, so about two years, and then. Uh, um, basically, we just get in settled and everything, and we, we since we got here, we just got together, start rehearsing and everything, working. Uh, we worked on the uh, EP, all the Dead Sea and the War, mm -hmm. and um, actually, it was a it was a, a cool experience for us. We learned a lot and everything, and uh, so far, you know, I'm trying to make it uh, short as yeah as much as possible. So yeah, and here we are. That's our first tour. Um, going through the US uh, so far we did uh, part one which is about like uh, I think uh, 15 to 18 uh, shows different states uh, mm -hmm. uh, going through through all like Midwest and all the Northeast way to the Texas south. which is where I'm from yeah <laughs> nice Hell how'd yeah. you like that <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> well Texas you I picked think, up some lingo yeah, huh? yeah. no actually it takes us kind of funny that we had a um, like few people that thought that I'm from Texas so that was cool really yeah <laughs> so it was it was a really cool thing so. so you've been doing some West Coast shows um, based out of here so, mm -hmm. okay can you tell me a little bit about that it's going it's going like around around the California basically it's just a couple of local shows we're doing our best to spread the wings around California not to stick it to one place or one spot um, in the state so um, like we've done like a couple of shows down in Long Beach and uh, San Francisco was awesome uh, we're doing a couple more and um, we've done the whiskey in LA and then like uh, heading to San Frenzo uh, Fresno, I think, yeah. San Fran okay. Fransco? Oh, Fresno. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, like, we, we're going to do that, and then, like, uh, heading all the way to Seattle on the 15th. Um, not the 15th, the 16th, right? Or 17th? Yeah, uh, well, 17th. We, yeah we headed to Oregon. So. And after that, it was going to be all, all continuing to the Midwest. Um, as soon as we're going to hit El Paso, from El Paso we're going to be heading the van straight all the way to New York and whatever comes um, from Memphis, um, Denver City, and then like whatever comes next. You're going to be all over the place. Pretty we, much. We yeah. love it. We, we yeah. never know where we're going to be ending up, so it's yeah, like we just more know. adventurous. You know? So what do you think about life in America and life on tour in general? I mean, you guys have come from such a difficult place, and I know every interview kind of you know, delves into that, but... You know, I interview a lot of bands who are like, oh, life on tour is so hard, you know? What do you guys think about that? Is it a piece of cake? <laughs> Actually, it's exciting. It's more than a hard. I mean, like, it's nobody nobody have anything to do to um, say about, it, yeah, about yeah. like, driving. The driving, we got, like, the guy, Ahmed, which is, like, he got he got super um, conscious about it. And he, he done, like, so much hard work about the driving part. Um, even um, and we, we like he's a really close brother to us. So none of us ha was driving. We were just like sleeping and then get into the show. That's nice. We get in we get in exhausted. But the poor guy like been spending like 15, 16 hours on the road all the way. So it was, like sometimes it goes really crazy with him. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I mean, but he's like a machine. He's a hardcore guy, you know, driver. Especially it, it's all good. But as matter the type of life in the road, it's it's sort of hard when when you. Just like want to figure out what the what the system around these cities are like, and like you want to figure out wh whether you're legal or or, or not, you know wh what it, wh what exactly you're gonna eat, um, things like that, you know. It's a good segue to my next question. Yeah. Right. American junk food. What's your favorite? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got some pretty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, not not really. We never. I mean, I don't know. Like. Uh, we we had a lot of fast food. You can tell. <laughs> oh, come so on. That's uh, definitely. But we don't have like uh, 
we can't name any favorite. Basically, yeah. whatever whatever fills your belly, that's what we look for. I'll tell you one thing. Yeah. Um, I'm a like, I'm a freaking addict to burgers. Yeah. yeah well. While I was like, since the period, like since I was born, until the time I hit it in New York before the tour. Mm-hmm. Exactly. After like 15 days, you start realizing I was definitely wrong about it. <laughs> like, and I don't want to touch any burgers anymore, you know, especially all the yeah. Yeah, too much burger. Well, I mean, yeah, basically our meals is it's like whatever, whatever that you can find. I mean, whatever it is, like fast food or whatever. Sometimes we have the like uh, uh, meals, uh, the venues or whatever we go. Sure. And well, I mean, food wise. Why we didn't starve? <laughs> we <laughs> yeah. have never been, so it's okay. You're uh, burning yeah, anyway, yeah. so yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, the stage. Uh, so far, I mean, I mean, every place that we've heard so many crazy stories about. Oh, you're gonna hit that city, and that city is not, you know, like it's not gonna be cool. That city's gonna be, blah blah blah. So once we hit the city, meet the people, it's all like nothing, and all people are so nice and cool and everything, and um, actually, surprisingly. Like uh, it was, it was, it was a nice, uh, a great turnout. Actually, in every city we hit, the the, 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 the people, like the, the number of people that we say gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and, and and every town we go through, like there's somebody that knows about us, yeah. which is which is kind of like, you know, it, it, it is exciting as a band, and you go there and you, they go like, oh, I know these guys, and one time we were driving somewhere. Uh, and the lady stopped by the gas station. She goes like, "Aren't you the guys from the movie?" I was like, "Yes." And then she gets to You're start off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I wouldn't call celebrities in a way, but You're but but you know, like kind of like it's it's pretty cool when you walk around and people recognize you to a limit because after that we'll get you know yeah. <laughs> we'll get really excessive. As soon as it doesn't go crazy, yeah, it's yeah. okay. Not getting followed by paparazzi. Please, no. not yet, <laughs> not yet. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I'm sure you've heard the term <clears throat> the American dream, and yeah. to me, that's kind of what describes your story. And yeah. I was wondering if you could explain in your words what what your opinion of is, is what is the American dream to you, and do you feel like you're living it? I think it's more like it's the music dream, mm-hmm. um, becoming becoming true in each step and each mile you take. Um, because a musician, one guy told me like one time that a, a musician can be practicing as hard as he can, and can be can be the most amazing guitarist or mu- best musician or artist in the whole world, but like he would never actually experience that the true music unless he's gonna be on the road. And the dream, wh- what is defined dream? I mean, like being being popular or a celebrity or being famous and rich and all that like it doesn't matter as long as you're living your own dream Mm -hmm. it's it I think it goes to everybody's dreams you know not just the American one but I guess like the terms of the American dream you have to be having a Corvette on the side of the road you know (laughs) park Parking it on the you know with a, a Camaro. Of rupees going back and forth. Yeah, that's American dream, definitely. I'll, I'll, but I'll be that, happy with a happen. bike. Uh, I'm not looking for something. I go, I go, I go with bikes too. Luxury, so. <laughs> yeah, like uh, nothing like very extra. In general, yeah, in general, be happy with bikes. Hypothetically, <laughs> yeah, would be would be more awkward if you said like, yes, I have lived the American dream. But um, actually, we are going after our, our one goal, like our own dreams, you know, like touring the States, touring our music, making um, our music be heard that with uh, as much as amount of people, being successful in terms that, you, okay, you, you reach that goal. This is, this is what success means. Like, it doesn't, doesn't matter if you're going to gain a lot, you know or how much worthy or wealthy you're going to be, mm-hmm. it's, it's still worth it, you know, at least you've lived it. Great answer. Um, another term that comes to mind when I think of you guys is the tortured artist. Um, I mean, the, you know, what you guys have been through as far as fueling your music, um, could you ever write a happy song? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, <laughs> let me let me laugh about it a little bit. <laughs> okay. Because, um, I mean, you know, like, 
the the things that you've written, it's like on a different level than other music. I mean, it makes some metal music un like unbelievable to me after listening to you guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it could. I mean, we could. I mean, music. It's it's happiness and music. It's all about like uh, whatever you're thinking of at the moment. But 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 I guess you know, like being in the, being in a metal band, other than just being in a metal band. But we picked up the metal style because. We wanted to deliver the message, and the message was too too aggressive, I guess, in a way that we couldn't deliver it with something less than a metal sure. sound. So mm -hmm. that was that was that's why we picked up metal. I mean, when we when we decided to get in a band and make a band, it wasn't the idea even to be a metal band or something. It was just uh, uh, four guys, you know, rehearsing, playing music, and that was the idea. And then. From there, I start picking up, picking up the, the the level of the style, start going up, and then we end up with heavy metal, and then we just said, okay, that's what we want to do, mm -hmm. because that's the best way to express uh, what we feel and, sure. and our music. I mean, I think happy there. songs and happy thoughts will be always there. You know, yeah. uh, good energy is always there, spreading its way, it wings. But like, the only thing that comes within that the style that that we lived with and the the type of life that we grew up with and this band has been having its own its own history already been written so far so i think like it's too hard for um it's not very hard i mean we're musicians we can i mean the the time the, our own like second part job like of our band like keep playing reggae's and jazz and whenever mm. blues and whenever we feel like it, you know. Well, this is this is where we're living, especially on the road, and especially like our, our on our own, only off times, you know. Just like we try to entertain as, our, ourselves as much as we can. But like, whenever you want to write something, and you actually mention the name across Coda or the band's name or something, like you actually think about being serious. You actually keep thinking about something. Okay, you wrote a song well, such uh, as yeah. "Garden of Stone" or "Message from Baghdad." You can. You can write a song about something, um, something similar to "Oh, please, oh, don't you cry" by Guns N' Roses. You can't go with "Baby, that's all I want." It's like <laughs> you can't. It's just like yeah. it's too hard to express the guitar, even with its own riff. You know, it's like I don't know, man. It's just something. I mean, side project. We were actually talking about that when we were on our way from Vegas. And uh, oh, yeah. Mo here, Mo's <laughs> yeah. like a—he's a big rock and roll fan. He—he's like—he estimated his own influences by Guns N' Roses and Led Zeppelin and all that. He's so super enthusiastic about it. And like we were talking about, it's it like guys, we need to switch to something, you know. So we need to be happy about something for once in a while. Yeah. Just like it's getting too creepy these days, you know. Mm -hmm. And like, I mean, the whole conversation keep going back and forth. But like, you have with this band and with this with these lyrics, you have just one message to deliver. But if you want to do side project, like even with me, I'm telling them it's like if I'm gonna be ever quitting that band, I'm gonna be having my own country project. You know, I'm gonna be like acoustic singers, like doing my own thing. He, he's going with progressive or, so, or more something like a. a folk type of music, music you know, it's like, yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah, yeah, whatever, you I mean, gotta, you gotta I mean, do whatever, whatever yeah, you I mean, both, yeah, you know, yeah. but like, during this band, it's more like a, that's why we call it like a different opinions, but one thought, and ev all the opinions gathered with one, yeah. one message to be written, so, it's kind of hard to switch the style <laughs> now. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, yeah, it's, I just, uh, it's not, it's not just about the style, I mean, you cannot, like, I don't know. Like this is this is what we this is what we liked, and this is what we express ourselves, right. uh, rather than playing a mellow like ballad songs or whatever. I mean, and, and we thinking actually about doing a ballad song in the meantime. But in, in general, I mean, yeah, we we are happy. We can, <laughs> yeah, we have happiness inside of us. But it's 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 just that so only our songs are gloomy. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, because because <laughs> it's it, the songs it just doesn't represent us as four or five guys. It repre it repre it represent, I'm sorry, a whole country and a whole story of, of death and destruction and chaos and whatever uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, whatnot. I mean, so we're not talking about just ourselves. I mean, so. We can't really. I mean, we can find something happy, but 
it, it's not going to be happy all the time, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I read that you guys are working on new material and planning a next album. Can you tell me a little bit about that? It's actually going back and forth. The only that the whole idea of getting here to California was like to spread the wings and just wash your brain from all the city and job and family responsibility away from the East Coast. I mean, the East Coast, like, don't get us wrong, we love the East Coast, we love being there. But, like, the band doesn't lack it that much, <laughs> you know, uh-huh. being there as musicians. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know, you were West, West Coast, Coast Rolls or whatever. No, West Coast, actually. Really we're far from the East, West Don't uh, we don't go with that rule. But the thing is, like, we, there you build your own career. As far as musician, you have to go to wild, wild and more refreshing spots. Sure. So that's that was the purpose: getting getting ourselves on the road, in a different place, fresh our minds, and try to write new material. So the new the new ideas, yes, there is there is a couple like three or to four new ideas is like coming back and forth. Um, lyrically, ha- hasn't been done anything yet, but like. The, the mellow and the whole bottom theme is going so great. It's more symphonic death metal to go and and keep going back and forth, you know, with, with all these ideas. I mean, yeah, we still have the ideas. I mean, haven't we haven't like, put anything out like basically officially okay. done yet. It's it's we're still working on it and still have like a lot of work to be done before. I mean, we we just put down the ideas. I mean, the basics that we get a you know like the concretes that we what what we need to focus on and work on and everything put the riffs and stuff like that but after we get back home and um, we'll take a break and everything and then we'll meet again and and we'll work on it some more before we hit like we go to the studio and and make it official Mm -hmm. um so you receive a large sum of money what do you want to do with it for the band with the band. Oh, <laughs> no, no. No, actually actually the first thing what I oh what I the first thing what I would do it's buy a new drum kit and cymbals for the drummer. Because that's yeah, what like, left of his drum as kit. You can see it's the these are the last Ouch. pieces of the, the pieces. like like he been on tour this drum been on tour for a while, so this drum kit is Wait, do we have like a, a can symbol? You, can you, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 the broken one. Take too. take some of the symbols and like this is actually what happens when you tour holy moly yeah you, um, you break them actually <laughs> yeah yeah well it's <laughs> see kids don't do this at home <laughs> yeah change your styles whenever you're thinking of playing heavy metal or if you want to bring again. the band a gift there you go <laughs> i mean they're all broken so i can't tell you nothing basically. yeah they, do, yeah. they don't make sounds <laughs> except like chaos <laughs> so. you know like they don't work anymore uh our equipment, like amplifiers and everything, is start dying on us and stuff. Like last yeah. show, we had an amplifier start dying and the guitar uh, issues and stuff like that. It's it's natural. I mean, being on tour. Sure. But basically, that's what I. The first thing what I would do is, is get an RV. <laughs> Number one. Get, get a good RV. Yeah, yeah, get a good RV to do the road with because we had a good. I mean, really bad experience with 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 vehicles, breakdowns, breakdowns oh. top flat tires, all kind of stuff. So yeah. We spent a lot of money that should have been we could have been used it towards to uh, different things. <laughs> yeah, we could have used that for equipment or for something else. But basically, we spent it on on the road, on on the truck, fixing the tire, fixing the engine, fixing this, fixing that. <laughs> And we drove, actually we drove all the way from New York to Texas with a, with a, with a semi RV. It's not even an RV, it's a truck that has a... a it's a commercial a, truck. Yeah, like it's a, a like a, a van, yeah. a van that basically has a room mm-hmm. on the back of it. I think I know what you're talking about. And it doesn't have no AC. It was uh, Texas with no AC? Yeah, no AC, no beds. Uh, Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> so we drove, we yeah, like we were, we were, we were like, uh, pretty much like fried sausage. Yeah. At the end of the tour. Anyway, I mean, all the way to Texas. It's and okay. Then, we're in, from the Middle East. We're yeah. used to the desert. It's yeah. Better. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, so get an RV, get equipment, and whatever. We party. The rest of not not really. I don't know. Yeah. There's so that many. Sounds good. There's no, but there's so many priorities before we even think about partying. Sure. Though. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you have coming up that you'd like to talk about? Um, as far as keep it real and keep it rock I mean, and roll no. all the time I guess like 
Um, this is, as you can see, there, this is the life of touring. This is the life of being in a band, um, doing all this commitment. So, like, whenever you're thinking of, about creating a band, don't do this at home. Like, think <laughs> twice before Aww. you actually. Do. No, no. But the the fun. Just think about this. The fun that you're gonna be missing is a lot. There's you too don't much want, yeah. nice people out yeah. there. A lot of good friends. A lot of good families. You can like really spread awesome your wings. Interviews. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hot chicks. There you go. There you go. Thanks. You got it power, you know. You have to hit it hard. <laughs> and well, we I mean, uh, not tomorrow the day after we've been we be on the road again mm -hmm. to finish the second part of the tour, which we never thought of. <laughs> But basically, this is what happened. We now we're going to do a second part of the tour. And we're gonna go all uh, we're gonna go all the west coast and head hit like Midwest and then all the way down south and heading back to New York. Um, I mean, if you want to keep in touch and keep updated, just uh, check our MySpace page. I mean, and Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> uh, Cressy Coda. That's a band name. I don't know how to spell. I mean, I can spell it for you, but you're probably gonna have trouble You'll finding it out. a second ago. Uh, if you have any trouble finding us, just uh, look on YouTube for Heavy Metal in Baghdad. You're gonna find the band name and all the details. Uh, what else? Well, great. Thanks for a lot. Real. Rock real. on. Spread the love. Awesome. Thanks for your time. No problem. <laughs>